Well, this trial is now really headed to its final stages as both the prosecution and defence have finished calling witnesses to testify. So uh, now uh, the court won't be in session again until 2.15 uh, p.m. local time here in New York. And the jury is excused until this coming Tuesday, Tuesday the 28th. This afternoon, uh, they're just going to be hashing out the jury instructions for deliberation. Uh, so really, uh, we heard uh, this morning in court from the uh, final witness called by the defence. The defence only called two witnesses. The most important was Bob Costello, a, a lawyer who at one point advised Michael Cohen. And the defence's aim in calling him was to further try to undermine Cohen's testimony. Now, uh, the prosecution called some 20 witnesses over the course of this trial, which is in its sixth week. Uh, and uh, the most important, of course, of those witnesses was Michael Cohen and this case really hinges on his testimony and on whether or not jurors will believe what he said. He essentially said his version of events is that Donald Trump knew about everything and orchestrated these hush money payments and the cover-up that he was instructed to carry out. So uh, really we're going to find out once we uh, get the verdict in possibly sometime at the end of next week uh, from that jury whether or not the prosecution managed to convince all 12 jurors that Michael Cohen was telling the truth. And Jessica, just give us a bit of an insight into what the last few weeks have been like for you as a journalist, because you've been in court, haven't you, covering it, but also outside talking to us as well. So what's the whole thing felt like? Well, so let's start with inside the courtroom. Sitting inside, it really uh, sounded like listening to the inner workings of the mob. Uh, these were tales about uh, Trump sleeping with a former porn star trying to cover his tracks so that this information uh, didn't get sold to newspapers and didn't get in the way of his run for president uh, and also how he tried allegedly to cover his tracks and uh, the main witness sounded like a mobster himself Michael Cohen uh, is a known liar and so uh, the prosecution is relying on somebody who is known to have lied before even in court uh, uh, to be the star witness but as court reporters here pointed out to me this wouldn't be the first time uh, that a court case has rested on testimony from someone who's lied in the past uh, because that has happened in plenty of other mafia trials here uh, in New York. And so really what the prosecution needed to do was back up what Cohen was saying with evidence. And uh, this is exactly what we saw them do in court. We had Michael Cohen's version of events and then actual documents to back up what he was saying and then corroboration from all of the other witnesses. So it's going to be very interesting uh, to hear who the jury believes. Now, outside Outside the courtroom, uh, outside here uh, in front of the courthouse, there have been really colourful scenes over these weeks. I must say that this place has really been a magnet for conspiracy theorists and for extremists. We've had the Proud Boys down here, uh, the head of the New York chapter of the Hells Angels. We've had far right, uh, right wing members of Congress coming to speak here. Uh, but what is perhaps most striking is also what Donald Trump's been saying uh, outside of the courtroom. Uh, today, yet again, he called the, these court proceedings uh, 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 illegitimate and said this is a kangaroo court. So outside the courtroom, we've seen this kind of post-truth world, uh, which is actually quite frightening because in a way you can say that uh, uh, the institutions of this country, the legal system, is really being undermined by, uh, by Donald Trump, a man who's running for president. Jessica Lamazaria,